Okay, so here's the second part of this. Um, I ran out of memory, uh, and um, honestly, I just don't feel like editing these two together. So I'm going to do a double upload, part one and part two. So here we go. We've gone through the main series of Friday the 13th, and we've come up now to Freddy vs. Jason, which is a movie that ever since Jason goes to hell, people have been begging for and they've been trying for years to get it made eventually it gets made not to everyone's liking not because it's a bad movie mainly because they recast Jason it's no longer Kane Hodder and a lot of people felt that Kane Hodder should have got that role I get it. I get why people would want it to be Kane Hodder. I get why it should have been Kane Hodder. But I also get why they changed it. You know, Kane Hodder would just dwarf Robert England, And it wouldn't even be a question. What made Freddy vs. Jason interesting is, you know, it, it's a crossover movie. So really, you should be getting equal parts. You know, Freddy, Jason. But that's not really what you get. What you get is a Friday the 13th movie with Freddy in it. When you actually look at it, Freddy gets one kill in the entire movie. The rest are all Jason. And they're like stereotypical Jason, if you will. They're his level of brutality, you know? There's not the, the cleverness of the Freddy Krueger or anything it's breaking people in half it's chopping people's heads off and everything you know it's obviously Jason but what this movie does well and it's really weird that I'm gonna say this in a Friday the 13th retrospective what Freddy vs. Jason does really well is it makes Freddy a genuine threat until then, you're like, it, it's a dude with, like, blades on his hands. He never, you know, seems like a real threat, like, outside of, like, the dream world. But then you, you see him, like, fighting Jason in this, and he, he's, he's fucking brutal. Blades through the eyes of the mask and everything. And, you know, it could be argued you know, as to who the real winner in that movie is, and with that little twist at the end. But, as a Friday the 13th movie, it's a damn fun one. And it fits in just just fine. It's a, it's a great film, honestly. And it's really fun to see annoying teenagers get what's coming to them. <laughs> yeah. Not to mention, you know, I, I remember seeing it in the theater and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was great. You know, it, it, it's a popcorn film. Even more so than any of the other Friday the 13th movies, Freddy vs. Jason is a pure popcorn film. You go to that to be entertained. You don't go for story. You don't go for, you know... You know, to, you go there to turn your brain off, watch some crazy kills, and just have a good time. And that's 100% what it is. So we'll leave it at that. So we'll move on now to the Friday the 13th remake. Th this one's uh, an interesting one. Because, really, when I first saw it, I didn't think too much of it. Mainly because, for one reason, I came out of the theater, and there were some guys talking, they're like, like, and one of them was saying to the other one, he was like, damn man, if only they hadn't stolen Jason's weed, everything would have been fine. And I'm like, oh my god, these morons think he's a pot dealer. And it's something that wasn't addressed in the movie enough. The fact that, you know, like, no, he's killing people because they're coming, like, on his property, not because they're stealing weed. Dude, seriously, stop it. It's, 
it, it was a it was a misstep. Let's say that. But leaving that part aside, it was one of the more successful. I feel Friday the Thirteenth sequels. You had the brutality that we've come to know and love from Jason. You have a living Jason, which actually runs, which is kind of... That's scary unto itself when you actually think about it, you know? That, like, you know, he's just not walking. He's he's hauling ass towards you, you know? Got a great makeup design. The mask looks good. Well, let's put it this way. Both masks look good since it has both the the sack mask and the hockey mask. And it's a believable way that he gets the the hockey mask, you know? It's not like just all of a sudden he has it, you know? It's like, no, he found it when he was stealing gas or whatever. Um, it's certainly a more human Jason. I mean... He's still a monster, but he's not the monster of, like, he's not the Kane Hodder monster. Like, the completely, like, mindless killing machine, you know, but this is his land. You come here, you're gonna die. I I wish that had been more prevalent. Again, with all these movies, there are very few of the cannon fodder characters that you honestly care about. I mean, I think maybe in the entire series there's been maybe three, three or four that I've actually cared about. The rest are just that cannon fodder. And the remake does a really good job of making some of these people so unlikable that when they do get it, you're like, yes. But one thing it does, which really, when I first saw it, it really kind of threw me for a loop. They build up one character to be, like, the final character. And then right at the end they get killed. And it's like... Like, I did not see that coming. All in all, it's a really solid Friday the 13th entry. And it's one that, unfortunately, especially now due to the whole legal ramblings and everything we're not seeing any more of. You know, I hope they can sort that stuff out soon enough and you know get a new Friday the 13th on the table cuz we uh, we want it and we kind of deserve it honestly after the wait. And honestly, I kind of hope they go with a continuation of the remake. You know, or if they finally do the damn uh, one in winter that I've been wanting for years. A Friday the 13th in winter. Think about that. People going, like, cross-country skiing or something, and, like, they just happen to go through where Crystal Lake is, and Jason's there in the snow. It'd be awesome. And there was also talk about a found footage one. That would be a bit harder to do, but it could be done, and I think it could work, honestly. Then again, you know, I'm a found footage fan as well, so that works. So that's it for the movies. I'm going to go on better. I'm going to go into the game. The Friday the 13th video game. It was beautiful. It was a fun game. Everyone liked it. Then this legal stuff happened and we don't get no more updates. Uh, We're stuck with a still, you know, a fun game. But a game that could have been... That could have kept going. You know? From what I know, they had Uber Jason made. He was pretty much done. You know? They could have released that and everything, but no. Stupid legal ramblings getting in the way. Is what it is. I loved the amount of love they showed towards the series. I mean, even just in that, uh, the virtual cabin that they had in that game, where you could just go around, see different little bits of Jason lore throughout, like, 
the cabin and everything. It was a fun little thing, and it just proved how much the developers loved the series, and that they are fans like us. It's just a damn shame. I'd like to see, like I said, get this legal crap out of the way and get stuff going again. We need more. We deserve more. So yeah, that's it. That's my review slash overview of uh, the Friday the 13th series. They're not all great. But they're all fun. Honestly, even part one. Even though, like I said, it is a bit of a... It is kind of generic. Even if it was one of the first, generic is still generic. But, all in all, a great series. Worth the time for anyone who's never seen it. If you have never seen a Friday the 13th movie, um... Go away. Just just leave. You know, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Um, they're cheap enough to buy. They're on TV. There's no excuse. But, you know what, I'll say, unless like you're like a young horror fan who's just getting into it, uh, you have no excuse for not have, having seen the Friday the 13th films. I'll just leave it at that. But yeah, that's it for now. See you next time.